Welcome back, Flare community. Today, we're going to be jumping into the second part of a layer cake deep dive, highlighting how Flare's protocols protect against chain reorganization attacks. We will also discover another passive income stream for those looking to become a bandwidth provider. If you're yet to watch part one of this layer cake deep dive, which introduces the idea of bandwidth providers, I would highly recommend starting there. A link to the video should be displayed in the top right. So with that being said, let's have a little listen to some words of wisdom from Fleur's CEO, Hugo Filion. Let's jump in. This is chain reorganization. This is operating safely across different zones of blockchain sovereignty. And what we mean by sovereignty is essentially the consensus protocol of each chain has its own rules. And therefore, each chain that is connected to another chain is essentially receiving the output of those consensus rules on the other chain. So, as I've just said, let's say take Ethereum and Solana. Let's say you bridge to Solana. You bridge some Ethereum to Solana. Solana is now relying on Ethereum's consensus. Because if something goes wrong with Ethereum's consensus, Solana is exposed to, the ri to that risk. And its DeFi ecosystem is exposed to that risk. And this is really where the idea of a reorganization attack comes in. So under a reorganization attack, a user, or in fact an attacker, would deposit a large amount of Ethereum in the Ethereum smart co bridge smart contract. They would receive Solana Ethereum, so the wrapped Ethereum, on Solana, and they would immediately sell that for cash, let's say USDT or USDC. They would then buy up hashing power in order to subvert Ethereum's consensus and bring the Ethereum chain back to the state prior to the initial Ethereum deposit. So they end up with their Ethereum back, their large amount is ETH back, and the dollars they sold it for. The problem is the bridge contract is now deficient in ETH collateral relative to the amount of minted wrapped ETH. And this means that the wrapped ETH, the SETH on Solana, will unpeg from the value of ETH because it's no longer one-to-one -one backed. And this has major downstream effects on the DeFi ecosystem, on the chain that is reliant on the consensus of the other chain. In this case, Solana being reliant on the consensus of Ethereum. This is something we want to avoid. So we avoid this again through the insurance mechanism. Bandwidth providers are not only providing those 500 ETH in order to speed up the time of transfer. They're providing additional collateral in terms of reorganization protection collateral. And that collateral has held for a number of hours. Sometimes maybe in some, for some chains, maybe six hours, for other chains, maybe 12 hours. And as time goes on, the risk of a, a reorganization at a particular block diminishes. So Flare is holding both the collateral, which enables the bridge to be fast, but also collateral, which enables the bridge to be reorganization resistant. And so this means that the bridge is resistant both to bandwidth providers becoming malicious and against a chain reorganization attack. We think this is the most robust way to do bridging. And so the risk of chain reorganization due speci specifically to layer kick can be reduced if the bandwidth that is provided is below the threshold at which is desirable to attack a chain. So it's very expensive to attack a chain. You know, you have to, you would have to have many, many hundreds of millions, if not many, many billions at risk in the, um, in the bridge in order for it to be worth acquiring sufficient hashing power to attack the chain. So in practice, it is very expensive and therefore the bandwidth provision can be very, very large, which means that we can be safe even with very, very high bandwidth. But for providing the collateral against these risks, the bandwidth providers earn a small fee for each bridging event. 
and at 10 basis points, so 0.1%. We, we've modeled it and it's, it's in the um, layer cake paper on our website at the end. We think bandwidth providers will earn about 37% per year under the assumption that the bridge is being utilized um, at, at full utilization. So to our knowledge, layer cake provides the most decentralized and lowest risk way of moving value between chains whilst remaining economically competitive, both for users and bandwidth providers. So there we have it. Safety is absolutely paramount when it comes to building bridges of the future. Fortunately, the Flare team have thought of everything and the Layer Cake protocol provides more than enough protection against reorganizational attacks. In addition, it's always reassuring to know that the funds of the users is always 100% secure and safe. This is just yet another reason why Fleur is way ahead of the game, building something that's never been built before. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you all so much for tuning in and until next time, I'm out. Mission control. We have liftoff.